Few things caught my attention growing up like the sounds and the smell of a fajita sizzle plate being walked through a restaurant dining room. Today we're gonna replicate that at home for an easy weeknight sizzling fajita platter, including the secret to creating that iconic sizzle. But the first thing we gotta do is prep the chicken, so let's just jump right into it. For about two to three servings, you're gonna need about a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. And make sure you've got some good quality chicken because it does make a difference. Then we wanna take a knife and carefully slice it in half to create two thin cutlets. And then we're gonna take those cutlets, we're gonna find the grain, and then we're gonna cut strips of chicken against the grain so that they're nice and tender later. Once you've gone through and sliced all the chicken, you wanna take a paper towel and just try and pat the strips as dry as you can so we can get a nice sear on them later and then get them into a bowl so we can get them marinated. So now we've got our chicken sliced and prepped. Now straight off the bat, I wanna hit it with some salt. And we're just gonna let that salt sit. And now we're gonna make a sort of like a fajita spice rub marinade kind of thing. So here I got a bunch of spices. So basically I'm just gonna use a spoon to measure. It's kind of, any rub is basically proportion based. So it doesn't matter if it's an actual spoon or a teaspoon or whatever, you can just use it to measure. And the first major component is gonna be chili powder. So we wanna go two tablespoons of the chili powder, which is gonna be our, our main flavor component. Maybe two and a half. Then I want one tablespoon of coriander one tablespoon of cumin, some granulated onion, some granulated garlic. This is not what you think it is. It's actually white vinegar powder. We're using a carbon steel to cook this and I can't add white vinegar to the pan or some acid, so I'm gonna compensate with this. About a tablespoon and then some chicken bouillon cubes. I'm gonna take one of these. You throw this into any salsa, any like salsa verde or some like tomato salsa. It's gonna add a ton of flavor. Ton of flavor right there. And if you wanted, you could throw some MSG in there. The bouillon cubes have it, which is why I didn't add it. But if you didn't have bouillon cubes, get yourself some MSG, about a tablespoon in there, you're good to go. Now I reserve a tablespoon or two for later when we're cooking the fajitas. And to the rest, I add some neutral oil, some avocado oil, enough to form a loose paste. Then we're gonna take that paste, pour it straight onto the chicken, mix it up until it's all completely coated. So now we're gonna let this marinate while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. The main vegetables we're gonna serve with it are onion, bell peppers, and garlic. Now if you're serving for a lot of people, you could do a tri-color bell pepper red, green, and yellow, so you have a nice color. But the fajitas I'm making today are for like enough for maybe two people. So I'm just gonna go with one red bell pepper because red's my, my favorite color of the bell peppers. One onion, one clove of garlic. Which fajita really just refers to any sort of vegetable or meat combination that is cut into strips. So we're just gonna cut these into strips, not too thin. We want some nice texture to it. So for the pepper, we just stand it up and slice around the core and any of that white of the pepper. We don't want any of that. We just want that nice flesh. Then you can cut these long strips, fairly thick. Like we said, we want some of that bite. You could also cut it across the width of the pepper so you can get more bite-sized pieces. It's all up to you. Just go through and cut them all into roughly equal sized slices. Then we're gonna get our onion. We're gonna cut off the top, the bottom, and then slice it in half, and then just cut strips along the curvature of the onion so we can get some nice equal strips. And just take that garlic clove, slice that into nice thin slices, and then we're ready to go. We've got our veg. Now we can focus a little bit on the condiments. I'm gonna go with four for your bar. First is guacamole. Make sure this part still comes attached when you buy an avocado. If it comes open, then it's gonna, it's gonna oxidize inside and you risk not having a perfectly green avocado. And then you wanna press down at the bottom where the seed is, and if that is soft, then you know it's ripe. It'll get soft up here before it's ripe down in the bottom. So you wanna always check the bottom. See how we did? This is probably a half a day or a day away from being perfectly ripe ripe, but we're gonna, see, perfectly green. Then to get it going, I just squeeze and smash with a fork inside its shell and scoop it into the bowl. Definitely could use another day, but we're gonna make it work. Gonna hit it with a little salt right away, some lime juice. I've got a whole guacamole video that I'll leave linked down below if you wanna know how I make my real guacamole. A little more salt. Avocados need a lot of salt. Just need like a tablespoon of onion. And if I'm gonna add raw onion to a guacamole, I want it 
cut as fine as I possibly can, just so we can get that flavor infused in the guacamole without huge raw bites of onion. The lime will also help neutralize it. We're gonna take a little cilantro, and just tear it right in, very rustic. You wanna be able to see the cilantro. Then I got some pickled jalapenos here. Showed you how to make these, I'll leave a link down below. You can buy store-bought pickled jalapenos. I like to pickle my own with some carrots. The carrots are the best. I'm just gonna take a few. Dice them up like the onions and into the guacamole. Then a little bit of grated garlic right in. A little bit more lime juice. Once you've tasted and adjusted the guacamole to your liking, we're gonna get it into these little sauce ramekins. I'm going with four. The next one, I'm adding the pickled jalapenos, then another one with sour cream, and another one with some really finely shredded Monterey Jack and Colby cheese. And then, of course, a few lime wedges. Lots of condiments you could use. These are the ones I'm going with today. So I got my pickled jalapenos, my sour cream, my cheese, my guacamole, a little bit of lime. All that's left is to talk about tortillas. And now, I've made flour tortillas on this channel a few times so I'll also leave links down to those however this is also designed to be like a weeknight fajitas so I'm gonna opt for store-bought but nowadays they have some really great store-bought tortillas that I want to use first one we got more of like a taco tortilla but this is both corn and flour and it's really artisanal made very good quality and you get the best of both worlds but it's a spit of a smaller tortilla Whole Foods has these flour tortillas very good, a little bit bigger, so we can make nice fajitas with it. But once you heat these up, loosen them, make them pliable again, these are really high quality tortillas. So if you can find them, try and get some good ones. We're gonna go with these. Gonna go with about three of them. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. Then we can talk about our sizzle platter. This is a five and a half by 11 and a half cast iron. It's pretty small, it's enough for one to two people. And it comes with a wood platter, so you can try and move it around and hold it. And it also comes with this tool that allows you to pick it up and move it off the heat into the platter. So we've got this prepared. What we wanna do is go ahead and get this heating up on the stove. Just wanna get on low heat, we wanna bring it up to temperature. When we start cooking, we really wanna blast it, and before we add anything to it, we want it to kinda of be smoking. But for a recipe like this, the pan kind of really matters. I need a pan that's gonna be able to cook the fajitas hot and fast. And that's why I'm gonna be using my carbon steel pan thanks to our sponsor today, Maiden. Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook. They partner with multi-generational factories and artisans to offer you a real comprehensive collection of pots, pans, serveware, and everything else you might need to cook and serve food in your home kitchen. If you're looking to start using some carbon steel, which I highly suggest you do, Maiden's carbon steel collection is for you. Their carbon steel collection includes includes an eight inch, a 10 inch, a 12 inch frying pan, a pizza steel, paella pan, roasting pan, and a wok. It's the perfect hybrid of a cast iron pan and a stainless steel frying pan. It heats quickly, it's light enough to maneuver like a regular stainless steel pan is on the stove top, and gives you incredible heat retention, just like a cast iron. And just like a cast iron pan, as you use it and season your carbon steel pan, it will develop a naturally nonstick surface. I like using it to cook meat, but I also like using it for things like stir fries and for fajitas like we're making today. I need to be able to toss the vegetables and the chicken in this pan, and unlike a cast iron, the carbon steel is light enough for me to do so. And you know I'm not gonna talk about Made In without saving you money, so if you click the link down in the description, you're gonna save 15% off your order at Made In today. So go gear up, and let's get back into the recipe. Now I wanna get that carbon steel pan on the stove to preheat. Last thing we gotta do is make the sizzle sauce. So in a squirt bottle, all I'm gonna add is a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of avocado oil. One part oil to two parts soy sauce. And we've got a little sizzle sauce that we're gonna add at the end. Now we've got our sizzle platter and our carbon steel pan preheating. We can start to heat up the tortillas. You can heat the tortillas up a lot of different ways. You could do it in the cast iron pan, but a fast way to do it is just right on the burner on like a medium low burner. And you just wanna turn it often so it doesn't burn. And like to fold them up and serve them like that on a platter. Cover them with foil and keep them warm. And once the carbon steel pan is ripping hot, I'm gonna add some avocado oil to the pan and then add the chicken into a nice even layer. And then we're just gonna leave it alone and let it sear. As we add that chicken to the pan, it's gonna cool the pan down slightly, so we wanna allow it to catch back up so that we can get some nice color development on one side of the chicken. We're gonna cook it about 70% of the way on one side. And we wanna toss it and sear that other side real quickly. And once we've got a nice brown on both sides, and ideally the chicken is not fully cooked through yet, we wanna get it into a bowl and set it off to the side. 
Now we want to get that pan ripping hot again and then add the onions. We're going to hit them with some salt and we really want to saute them nice and hard. A little bit more oil if they need and the moisture from the onions going to pick up any of those bits stuck on the bottom of the pan, all that flavor. What we're trying to achieve is sort of a blistering on the vegetables. And once we see the onions are beginning to soften, then we can add the bell peppers in, keeping that heat really hot. Hit it with a little bit more salt, a little bit more oil if you need. And we really want to make sure that we get this charring or blistering on the vegetable. At this point, I'm gonna start to kick up the heat a bit on the sizzle plate, and then we can add the garlic directly to the veg. And we really wanna make sure that we're getting a nice blister on these vegetables. A nice color development, and we want them to soften. And then we can hit them with a little bit more of that fajita spice rub, give it a nice toss, and then add the chicken back directly into the pan, and then immediately hit it with some sizzle sauce. It's gonna help steam the rest of the vegetables to tender, get everything back up to temperature, and deglaze the pan a bit. The chicken should be cooked through, the vegetables should be cooked. Time for the sizzle platter. Now we wanna blast the heat on the sizzle platter and make sure it's smoking before we add anything to it. Add the fajitas to the sizzle platter. I'm gonna keep the flame going so that I can make sure that sizzle lasts once I get it onto the table and I add the sizzle sauce to it. Now I gotta quickly reset all my gear, get the sizzle platter to the table, and once you're ready to serve it, you get your family and everyone around, and you hit it with that sizzle sauce, and you get hit with that sound and the smell, and you immediately know you're in for a good meal. Beautiful. Like to add a nice little greenery, some garnish with some cilantro, then you add a few limes to the platter and you're ready to serve. You take a tortilla, you take a little guac, a little sour cream, some of the pickled jalapenos, a little bit of cheese, and a little bit of the fajitas. Maybe a little bit of hot sauce, a little lime juice. You roll one side up and then you fold the sides onto each other and roll. And you've got a fun weeknight fajitas that everyone's gonna love. What a fun meal. You've got some theatrics. You and the family can be interactive with it. And best of all, it's packing in major flavor. So if you want the recipe for this and all the other videos that I mentioned throughout the video, link's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you enjoyed this recipe, then you're gonna love this cheesesteak Wit Wiz recipe that I've got on the screen right now, along with a few other videos in case you're interested. Thanks for watching.